Hi, Mining Community. Welcome back to another episode of the Dig Deep, the Mining Podcast. And today's guest is Will Dawes, who's the CEO and co-founder of Macango Resources, a junior mining uh, miner developing the Sung We Hill Rare Earth Project in Marari. Uh, and in addition, has an extensive uh, exploration portfolio in the country. Uh, Will has a background in geology and mineral exploration with a long career in the resources sector, uh, encompassing investment, banking, equity research, mineral exploration, and mining and metallurgy. Um, for, for over a decade, he's obviously been at the helm of Macango Resources, um, and it's gonna give us an insight into the company and his journey, um, and also obviously into the rare earths market. So that's welcome, Will, to the podcast. How you doing, Will? Good, thanks, Rob. Good to be on. Yeah. Appreciate your time as well. So, wondered if you can just tell us a little bit about your um, your career, what what you've been up to, um, and then obviously how you came to fi- uh, find Macango and obviously sure. built the company. Sure. So, so my background's in in geology. So I, I trained as a, um, a geologist, worked on the mines in South Africa, um, worked in exploration. And then uh, um, spent quite a few years in investment banking with JP Morgan. Um, and then um, I moved into sort of mineral exploration. I co-founded a business with um, Alex Lemon. Um, and, you know, we, we looked at projects um, globally. We looked at projects in, in Central Asia. Um, we looked at projects in, in the Middle East and in Africa. Um, but really, um, you know, starting a starting an exploration company, clearly you need to be uh, focused on a jurisdiction where where you can work, where you can work cost effectively, and when there and where there's sort of significant opportunities. Um, so we we initially partnered with a group called CCC, Consolidated Contractors Company, which is largest construction and engineering company in the Middle East, and. Um, and Malawi really became became the area of uh, an area of focus. And um, at that time, there was a lot of uranium exploration happening in Malawi, and we, you know, we had a pretty significant land position with with CCC. But then, um, around two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten, um, we're working in in the country, and at that time, rare earth prices were just starting to move, and. And that's really when um, you know rare earths came onto the radar, and 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 the recognition that you know Malawi had been known as a rare earths mineral province for many years. In fact, it was the first first country in in Africa where uh, carbonatites, which are the sort of host rock for for rare earths, are um, uh, were identified. So there's a number of these rare earth carbonatite deposits in Malawi. Um, the project that we focused on um, was one of four projects which was actually drilled by JICA and MMAJ, so the Japanese sort of government groups in the late 80s, um, Songway Hill Rare Earths Deposit. And so the market was right. Um, the uh, prices were rising. There was an increased focus on sort of critical, critical materials. Um, and, and, and in particular rare earths. And we were already working with relationships in a rare earths mineral province. So it, it made sense to, to really sort of reorientate the company towards this project. We saw a lot of potential. There was a, a small a sort of historical resource, um, about 1.3 million tons that had been um, identified by these Japanese government groups in, in the late 80s. Um, but you know, we went we went back, spent time on the ground, looked looked at the information, and we saw potential for a much larger resource. And in fact, that was borne out by subsequent work, where that 1.3 million tons became sort of 50 million tons, at least. So um, uh, with with a lot of ex- exploration upside. Um, so you know, we applied for the license, and um, with the support of investors in the UK group at the time called Montrose Partners, now Merlin, Merlin Partners and Hayward, Security, Hayward Securities, um, David Elliott and his group of investors. We, um, we, we founded, um, 
found in Macango and listed it in um, on the TSXV. And that enabled us to raise, you know, enough capital to move the project from what was a very early stage to, to what is now a, an advanced stage. Um, so we've completed a feasibility study for that project. Um, and we see a great future for rare earths in Malawi. Um, it is a rare earths mineral province. You know, infrastructure is, is improving very significantly. Um, and, you know, looking at what's, what's changed since those original um, groups were there in the late 80s, the markets changed. So, you know, there wasn't this, this whole sort of green revolution happening and, and, and the sort of wind power and EV sort of growth that's coming through. And Malawi's changed as well. There wasn't, there wasn't the infrastructure that there is now. There's a, there's a new railway line, much improved road network and a lot of power developments. So really that's, that's how, we, how, how we started, how we set up the company, listed in Canada. We subsequently listed on AIM. So we're a dual listed company now. And then, um, and then we started looking at other opportunities where we could add value and really sort of leverage off having that, that resource in a, you know, and Malo in Malawi is a great place to work. So um, that's really how it started. Um, Makango has a mine, refine, recycle strategy. Um, how are you implementing this strategy? So we, um, the next step downstream from, uh, from the project in Malawi, so we'll, we'll produce a, a purified mixed rare earth carbonate from Malawi, which is, which is it contains the whole suite of rare earths. Um, it, it is a high value product, um, but the next step downstream separates out the key rare earths for magnets which go into electric vehicles for example and that's neodymium and praseodymium um, so that carbonate would would normally sell at a, a discount um, so we started looking at opportunities you know so what's the next step downstream so it is not only to add value to that product um, but also to increase our marketing flexibility so the further downstream you go the more the greater the range of markets that you can, can sell the product into. Um, the next step downstream is, is the separation process. Um, and, you know, we, we couldn't do that in Malawi. There aren't the reagents. And to do that, you need, for example, um, either a ammonia or nitric acid or caustic soda and hydrochloric acid. And those reagents aren't available in Malawi. So that meant we needed to find um, and, and a jurisdiction which had sources of those reagents because they're closer to those reagents and the, the most, the more cost effective the supply of those reagents. And really for the next step downstream, the separation, you wanna be as low cost as possible because um, effectively you're competing with um, Chinese capacity. Um, so we, we started a process, we looked at potential sites in the UK we looked at sites in the EU, we looked at other jurisdictions, we completed scoping studies, really to get a, an understanding of what drives the operating costs of you know, the two conventional technologies for rare earth separation, so the chloride route and the nitric route. Um, we identified a site in Poland. Um, it's a country which um, we, we know pretty well, um, having spent time there um, looking at, at resources there. We have relationships on the ground, very experienced country director. Um, so Poland ticked all the boxes, um, obviously right, you know, right in the heart of the EU where you're seeing all these sort of battery developments, all these sort of EV developments. And we identified a site um, right next to a major chemicals plant in Poland. It's a fertilizer company. Um, and that, that company, Group Rosotti Palave, would provide the reagents which enables us to separate those rare earths um, right next door. So all the infrastructures there, there's um, rail, um, there's road, there's power, there's everything we need, there's the reagents on site, but importantly, the technology that we um, uh, plan to use is a nitric technology, um, which has no liquid waste stream. So it's a very circular process. So you have nitric acid and ammonia coming in. Um, those reagents are used to separate out the neodymium and praseodymium, which are the high value products in that carbonate. 
and then you produce ammonium nitrate sort of uh, byproduct, and that gets sold back to Group Rosotti. Um, so um, it's a very circular process, which means you know it's lower impact, and and it's also lower cost as well. And because there's no liquid waste streams, we um, you know it means you know this is an inland location. We don't have to be located on the coast. And as I mentioned, great infrastructure right in the, the heart of all these sort of developments, green developments happening in the, in the EU. So that's that's the separation piece. Um, um, so with the mining in Malawi, separation in Poland. Um, so the project in Malawi, uh, we recently completed the definitive feasibility study. The project in Poland is it is around the sort of pre-feasibility stage, and we're looking to to move into the feasibility stage on that. In parallel with that, we um, uh, we saw a great opportunity in the recycling sector, um, and this is the recycling of rare earth magnets. So those two rare earths, neodymium and praseodymium, that I mentioned, they make up about thirty percent of a rare earth magnet, and a rare earth magnet is is key for um, uh, for you know an electric vehicle motors. That ninety percent of um, EVs use them, also critical for direct drive wind turbines and you know, a whole host of other applications, consumer electronics, um, MRI machines, for example. Um, so, so the, um, and at the moment, less than 5% of rare earth magnets in end of life products are recycled. And you compare that to the you know, platinum group metal sector, and that should be north of 20%. So there is a, um, there's a, a really interesting market opportunity there. But one of the challenges of um, recycling rare earth magnets, if you imagine a very strong rare earth magnet embedded in some sort of assembly or component, it's extremely difficult to get out in an, an energy efficient way. Um, and you can shred that, you can shred that assembly, but then you know, that magnet just is going to disintegrate um, and it's going to stick to everything. And generally, it's generally lost. Um, and so a lot of um, rare earth magnets end up in, in landfill, which is a huge waste. In particular, having seen, you know, the amount of, you know, energy and, and you know, investment and time that goes into producing a, a, a rare earth magnet from, from a primary source, just looking at what we're doing in Malawi, and, and, and in Poland. So it's a huge waste. Um, and, you know, through um, another project we're working on, we had uh, developed a relationship with the University of Birmingham and, and the team at Hypermag. And, you know, Hypermag on the University of Birmingham had been sort of working on hydrogen technologies and rare earth magnets for many, many years. It, it is a center of excellence for magnetic materials. Um, and they, you know, at, at the university, um, a, a technology had been developed um, that really solves this, this issue, how to get a magnet out of a component or assembly in, a, in an energy efficient way. And it uses hydrogen. And, and basically what happens when you have um, a magnet embedded in a component and you expose it to hydrogen, it, um, it demagnetizes. Um, so that, that addresses one of the issues um, and it, it also forms a powder uh, and that addresses the other. It enables you to, um, to, to extract that powder from the, uh, from the assembly. Um, so you end up with a, a neodymium iron boron powder, um, which can then be remade into a magnet. It can be remelted into an alloy or it can be chemically processed. So what this technology can do is unlock this supply chain for, um, for, for recycling of rare earth magnets from end of life components. Um, a the team at Birmingham, they set up a company called Hypermag, which licensed the uh, technology from the University of Birmingham. And we were um, uh, you know, the first investor in Hypermag. We, we now hold a sort of 42% interest. And we're very keen to support the scale up of that technology and the rollout of that technology um, internationally. So um, it's a very key part of our strategy. Hypermag itself is a you know, fantastic technical team. 
long-standing experience um, in magnetic materials in industry as well. Um, and, um, and they've made very significant progress scaling up this technology. The pilot plant at the University of Birmingham has, has just been commissioned. Some great partners um, working on various sort of grant funded projects, you know, Jaguar Land Rover, GKN, um, Bentley, EMR. Um, so great, um, great partners, um, really interesting technology, great market opportunity. Um, and it really complements what we're doing on the mining and the separation side of things. So ultimately the vision for us is to be able to supply not only sustainably produce rare earths from a you know, conventional mining operation, but also recycled rare earths as well, which I think is a pretty unique, unique offering. And, and really I think sets us apart. We, you know, we were an early investor in this sector. Um, and I think that gives us, you know, an advantage um, in terms of um, being able to unlock Unlock the uh, unlock the supply chain. I wonder if you can expand on the work with uh, Hypermag um, and how it was secure rare earth supply chain outside of uh, China. Yeah. So um, so really, what what the, uh, um, at the at the moment a large proportion of you know electronic waste and embedded magnets that ends up in ends up in lands, landfill. Um, so so what. What Hypermag are doing alongside um, these, these great partners um, in the sector is really um, scaling up the process to um, liberate the magnets from that electronic waste and other and, and other in the future it'll be electric vehicle motors and, and you know wind wind turbine uh, wind turbines as well. Um, so at the moment um, there's various projects underway. Um, funded by UK government. So the UK, um, um, you know, Innovate UK driving the electric revolution has been very supportive of, of um, the development of this technology. It is a homegrown technology, fantastic opportunity. Also um, the EU as well, there's um, been a number of projects um, um, developing this, this technology further. So at the moment, um, what, what's, what's happening in the UK, in particular, there's one project called the SCREAM project. Um, that is uh, looking at processing different um, scrap types. Um, for example, um, electronic waste, loudspeakers, um, hard disk drives, electric vehicle motors, um, processing those different scrap types, um, introducing automation into the sort of pre-processing. Then you have the hydrogen process, um, and that's currently uh, at a scale as there's a pilot scale at the moment at the university, which uh, can process about, I think it's about 50 to 100 kilograms of batch. And that'll be scaled up to um, around 400 kilograms per batch at Tizey Energy Park, just outside Birmingham. Um, so then that produces that powder. And then the next step downstream from that um, uh, will be the magnet making. So there'll be a short loop process to remake a magnet. Um, and then there'll also be alloy making to make alloy pellets for remelting. And then in parallel with this, Macango um, will be developing a chemical process. So we'll be piloting a chemical process and that will process this magnet, um, recycled magnet material that can't be remade into magnet or can't be remelted into an alloy. And, and there's various sort of impurity levels which drive that. Um, so that pilot plant will be uh, developed at, at Tarsi Energy Park. So really it's, you know, the various um, projects that are underway at the moment with Hypermag, it's about, about scaling up, um, it's about sort of de-risking, it's about automation, it's about sort of processing different types of scrap and, and producing different types of products. So sort of maximizing flexibility and all that you know what that does it just creates this 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 platform to um, scale up further and also roll out the technology into you know uh, the rest of rest of europe and, and north america and, and and elsewhere and so that's really the next the next sort of step for us um earlier this year you released a definitive feasibility study for the, for the song one hill rare earth project um, I wonder if you can just talk us through the project and its next steps. No, sure. So, um, 
so this is a, a um, an integrated operation. So it's, uh, it's it's not you know rare earths and develop it is not it's not just about mining. Um, obviously, we have a mining operation. It's relatively simple. We use a contract miner, but really with rare earths, it's it's about the sort of processing. Um, so we've spent a huge amount of time on developing a processing flow sheet and, you know, focusing on, on the mineralogy, which is the key driver and how we can, um, you know, how we can make the most efficient flow sheet. Um, so we, we conducted that work in, in various laboratories in, in um, UK, Canada, South Africa, and sort of latterly in Australia. Um, the next step after the mining is flotation, which sort of concentrates the ore. And then we have a, a chemical process. And, and what that does, it, it uh, leaches out the rare earths, which are then sort of purified and, and precipitated into this sort of carbonate form. So it'll basically be a chemicals plant in Malawi, um, which, which, are, which will be a real sort of catalyst for, for um, or development in in the region in the country, um, you know, will produce various sort of byproducts, um, and um, you know, for example, gypsum that can be used in cement manufacture. We'll we'll have a sulfuric acid plant which can be used to make fertilizer. So this isn't just just about sort of rare earths and and um, you know exporting critical materials. This is a sort of development as well, um, and as such, we've had a lot of support from the local communities. Um, a lot of support from the government. This project will be, be sort of transformational. Um, and it'll be, you know, a first for Malawi, first for, first for Africa, really, in terms of, of, of rare earth development and, and really having, having a, an integrated plant that can produce a high value product. And that's what we'll be exporting from, from Malawi. And production will produce around 2,000 tonnes a year of neodymium and praseodymium oxides, um, and those you know those make up around you know sort of um, 80, 90 percent of the value of, of the product, and those are the rare earths that will separate out in um, in Poland, and which will go into the magnets and um, you know the downstream stream applications. Um, so really, um, we've got the feasibility study has been completed. Um, we are now um, um, looking at moving into the feed. Um, we engage Terra Franca project finance advisors to, um, to arrange sort of project finance. So we've had the banks out on site and that process is advancing well. Um, and um, yeah, we are, we are looking to um, you know, develop, develop this, this, this project. Um, into you know one a, a real first for Malawi, first for Africa, and there'll be you know a huge number of, of sort of follow-on benefits for for the region. Um, you've obviously mentioned that you established a, a processing hub in Europe. What stage is this at at the moment? So we're currently, I'd say we're around the sort of pre-feasibility stage, and we're looking to move into the feasibility stage. Um, we've got a very good, uh, you know, idea of the cost structure, the cost drivers, um, and you know, we're now looking at optimization. Um, similarly for Malawi, I mean, obviously, reagent prices and energy costs and freight costs have been pretty volatile recently. Um, you know, we believe that will settle down certainly within the um, time, excuse me, time frame for development. Um, so what we're doing in, 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 um, in Poland is um, we are currently engaging with potential strategic partners in order to move that project to the, to the, to the next stage. We're also looking at downstream opportunities. We're also evaluating synergies with what we're doing with Hypermag. So Hypermag also has a subsidiary in Germany, which is looking to scale up the recycling process and recycling capacity in Germany. Um, and there may be you know, potential synergies between what we're doing in Poland and what we're doing in, in Germany and, and, and the UK. So that's something we're looking, we're looking into. Um, there's a large grant funded project um, called Resilience, which is specifically looking at these sort of 
synergies and integrating primary and, and secondary production. So we're, we're, we're a part of that project as our Hypermag and Hypermag GmbH. Uh, what are the benefits of integrating yourself along the, the supply chain and how does this differ to say some of uh, other junior miners? Really the benefits come down to being able to, to extract more value from, from the product. Um, and you know, it's, it's really unlocking the discount at which we'd sell the, the carbonate if we didn't, we didn't go downstream. So that's one, one sort of major, major benefit. Um, and the other major benefit is really having um, more flexibility as to where you can market your product. Um, the further downstream you go, the more jurisdictions you, you can market into. Um, so rather than just Asia, you can look at, you know, sort of um, more diverse number of, of jurisdictions. Um, and, and really the way we're positioned at the moment, we have um, an interest in a recycling business where the end product would be magnets. Um, and then we have, um, and, that, and that which is developing capacity in, in magnet making. Um, and that capacity could also be filled with primary, primary feed as well. Um, and then we have, you know, separation plant development, which will go as far as oxides. So we're now looking at potential um, solutions and partnership opportunities in the, um, in, in the sort of metal making and alloy making. Um, so I think what differentiates us is, is the fact that um, through our interest in Hypermag, um, you know, we would be um, a producer of rare earth magnets, um, uh, recycled rare earth magnets. And that plant in, um, you know, near Birmingham will be uh, up and running next year. Um, most other companies who are looking at recycling um, are focused on, on the sort of chemical route. So the end product for that is oxides. So there's still quite a few steps downstream. It's a lot more energy intensive to, to get to an oxide. Um, so I, so I think we, um, you know, we are differentiated in that we are one of the very few companies with an advanced stage rare earth project at the definitive, you know, with a definitive feasibility study that it's done. And there's literally a handful who've got to that stage. There's a lot of exploration companies, but similar to what happened in 2010, 2011, when we first started in the business, a lot of those companies will disappear. Um, and so we've got, we've got our advanced stage project in a great jurisdiction. Um, we found a very attractive site in Poland, right in the heart of, of um, you know, what's happening in terms of EV development, battery development, um, you know, working with Group Rosotti Palave, second largest producer of nitrogen fertilizers in the EU. So some great partnerships, uh, partnership opportunities there. And then we have the strategic interest in Hypermag, which really has the IP and the know-how to unlock the supply chain for recycling of rare earth magnets. So whereas there's companies that may um, be able to um, sort of chemically process this material to actually get the magnet out of the assembly requires um, something different. And this technology addresses that that issue. So that's really us, where I see, you know, how, how we're differentiated. Got well, a couple more questions. Um, just wanted to give us a, an update on the rare earths market. Um, and also how much, how much of the market does China actually have? So um, the rare earth market is, the outlook is extremely positive. Prices have been a bit volatile. I mean, obviously with, you know, impact of COVID, Market, market volatility, other, other um, you know, Ukraine, et cetera, supply chains. There's been a lot of volatility in the market, um, but prices are, are strong and the outlook is extremely positive. I mean, I, I'd say there's a certain inevitability about it. Um, there's a bit, been a lot of focus on lithium. I think rare earths is catching up. There is a timeline um, to get a rare earth project into production. You know, we've been through that process. So we're very well positioned for when that, um, when that supply demand deficit really kicks in. But I mean, we um, uh, certainly looking at, for example, Adamus Intelligence forecasts, you know, they're, they're forecasting a tripling of demand 
and only a doubling of supply. So a significant supply demand squeeze coming through. I think for rare earths versus lithium, um, the market will probably move to higher value products in particular EVs. And if you look at an EV, the, um, the value of a magnet within that EV is a lot less than a battery, um, a lithium ion battery. So in you know, an electric vehicle, most of the cost is in that lithium ion battery. So um, that means there's much less substitution risk with, um, with a rare earth magnet. By using a rare earth um, permanent magnet motor, it means you can have a smaller battery for the same sort of efficiency. Um, so, there's, there's, um, uh, so that means ultimately that industry can support higher long-term prices. And I think um, once that recognition filters through, um, I think uh, we'll see, you know, very positive, um, you know, long-term outlook. Um, certainly, much higher prices than what what we're seeing at, at, at the, um, you know, at the moment. And you know, in terms of China, I mean, I think um, China does dominate the industry. It dominates, you know, sort of processing. Um, you know, there are, um, you know, there's there's um, MP materials in the US. That product is currently going into China. Um, obviously, Linus, um, Linus in, in, in Australia, all that product goes into, uh, into Japan. But I think, you know, China over many years has, you know, in, you know invested in, in the technology, the know-how, um, R&D. Um, so, um, and that's why it dominates the industry. Um, it's got a big EV industry. And, um, you know, but I think in order to have a more robust supply chain i think um i think it's going to be key to have um to develop these alternative independent supply chains and i think we we see mccango playing a certainly playing a, a significant role in that um obviously there's other groups who are in the sector but i think you know with the sort of supply demand deficit that we're going to see coming coming through there's certainly room for new entrants um and um, and I think we see a very um, key role for 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 recycling as well uh, for um, meeting a portion of that supply demand deficit. And lastly, just wonder if you can give just give us a, a um, wonder what the outlook is for the next sort of six to twelve months. Um, and is there anything else that you need to add or uh, tell our audience about? So really, so the focus on the three areas, um, three areas of the business. In terms of, of Malawi, um, we, we've completed a definitive feasibility study. The next step is the feed and optimizing to see where we can sort of lower costs and make it more efficient, but also this financing process that we've, we've started and, and going through that due diligence and working with the banks and their advisors. So that is that is Malawi. In, in Poland, we're looking to move into the um, the feasibility stage. We are, um, you know, engaging with potential strategic partners and investors and and the banks as well to move that project to the next level. And then and then with Hypermag and and the parallel sort of chemical route we're following. Um, so Hypermag and, and the University of Birmingham, um, the the pilot plant at the university has just been commissioned. Um, next year, there'll be the demonstration plant at Tysley Energy Park, which is funded by Driving the Electric Revolution. Um, and then um, also next year, we'll be starting up the pilot plant for the chemical processing and looking at um, opportunities to, to sort of roll out those technologies. So lo lots happening on all, on all fronts. Yeah. Well, really, thank you for your time in uh, obviously um, telling us about Macango and obviously the rare earth market. Um, it seems you've got everything under control and obviously probably a lot of spinning plates. Um, so obviously wish you well for the future and perhaps you want to come on uh, later next year or mid next year and give us an update. Thanks, Rob. Much appreciated. Yeah. Um, if our audience wants to reach out to you, if they've got any questions or want to find out more information about how, um, how the project is developing, how can they go about doing that? And are you across any social media platforms? Yeah, no, we're we're on uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and and you know I can be contacted by by email, and um, yeah, happy to to answer any follow up questions.
Yeah, we'll include those in the show notes accompanying this anyway. So, um, yeah, if you've got any questions, please uh, obviously feel free to reach out to Will. Um, for those that are listening, hope you enjoyed that episode. Obviously, rare earths um, is an important, obviously, com- important commodity uh, moving um, electrification and battery forward. Um, so it's a obviously important, important project that um, Will and Makango are, are doing. So appreciate if you can share this episode uh, with um, others around uh, others around the world within the industry, um, and even those outside, obviously, uh, of the industry to to inform them and make them aware of what what actually goes in into batteries and, and magnets. Um, so obviously a lot of information there so until next time happy mining